I keep hearing them down there. Splashing around. John and I woke up this morning. Came down to the banks of the river again. This time we're rigged up for, uh, we're getting rigged up for Browns and Brooks. Because we couldn't get the steelhead to hook up. So, you know, we're having ourselves a nice chilly morning out here on the river. And we're just going to walk down the bank and get our lines set. Check in with you. Now we're just trying to hoof it to the fisherman's walk. We're taking the way down that we came up yesterday instead of the rope. Just trying to get to those fish that are jumping, man. It's super hard to not be excited when you see fish. It's quite the chilly morning out here. It's hard to keep camera batteries alive. Uh, I just... I just hope fish are eaten. Just getting his spinner ready. It's got a much smaller spinning rod this time. And oh, let's check out that bait. It's a little metal spinner, you know. This little, this little shiny plate spins around. And it's got some hooks and a little fly piece on it. See if you can't get some Brooks of Browns. Call that an agitator. I've been called an agitator before. So just cast it up there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's more like bass fishing at this point. Like you're going to cast and let it drop and then reel. Just like that? Yeah, but further. If you can. I guess I can get out of your backswing so I'm not in the way. Yep. I might just go upstream more because of how fast the current is. I really wanted to like get myself talking about how to keep the uh the knot right on the, the lure or the yeah the hook. Well it, you're being filmed right now, so you can talk about it. Yeah, but it was nice to be able to show it. Yeah. Well, John's been over here having fun. I uh, broke my leader off on a log, so I don't have a tippet down here with me, so I'm just going to go ahead and take a piece of the leader we cut off for John yesterday and make it work, right? Right. You're using a leader that isn't made to be a fly fishing leader, it can be a little harder. So you're just going to want to fold that in half. problem with leaders that aren't made for fly fishing is that they just don't you know they're not as thin they're not as flexible you don't know how they're gonna handle everything you're just gonna wrap it a few times I usually do about four or five Ugh, see how it's like binding up on the other line here that's the hard part where it's coming up and coming up onto there okay now we've done that you're gonna come back down through this loop 
and then come back through this loop you just made. Ooh, that's ugly. It's ugly. There. And once you get it bit down, you know, trim off your excess. It's not pretty, but that'll work for right now when I don't have a tippet leader for my fly line. So since we're going after brooks and browns, I think I'm going to use more like this nymphy kind of topwater stuff. I think this one right here. Maybe? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows the workings of a fish? then all I'm trying to do is just float my fly up under all these logs and stuff. And I'll just pick it up, drop it in, pick a different line to come back to. I like to check the knot every once in a while on the lure, make sure it's still at the correct side of it, end of it, so it's not getting pulled through the water at some different angle than the actual line pulling. So what happened just now? Uh, when you're fly casting, you want a rhythm. You want the stuff at the front and the back of the cast to look the same. But I've got trees behind me, so I shorted my cast and it went up into a tree. And then I came down and split my rod. Now, as you can see, this one was already broken. This is one I had repaired at home with a piece of noodle and not like pasta, but like, you know, noodle rod and some epoxy, but it just snapped right off again. So, uh, you know, I'm going to go help John a little bit and I think I may actually just go to Reddington and get a new tip for this since my fix isn't, isn't working out. It worked really great for the little bit I was fly casting here, but I think, uh, I think I'm gonna call it a day on fishing. Let's go see what John's doing. You know, it's not that Reddington doesn't make a perfectly flying fly rod. I'm just really, really, really tough on my gear like that. I take, you know, I hike in fly rods. So, because I do a lot of hiking stuff, I break a lot of stuff. Reddington will replace this tip for $45. I was just trying to save $45 since I have some rod building skills, uh, but that's clearly not gonna work out. I will just pay the $45 for a new tip. I like this fly rod enough. I like this fly rod enough to buy a new tip for it, but I don't like it enough to not keep breaking it, I guess. How goes your fishing, John? Oh, uneventful. 
Well, mine's been better than that then, because mine was eventful at least. I broke stuff. But I haven't broken anything. I lost the top of the pole to get it back. I do that on that pole all the time. I think it's just old. Uh, I'm sorry, it's my favorite rod. Oh, you need me. Huh? You don't it's a it's a trigger, right? Oh. Now people hate it. Like absolutely hate the trigger because it's got backspin. That. Mm -hmm. but I like the trigger because it's one-handed. Hmm. Just showing John some features of my reel, of my favorite reel. Uh you know, it's been wholly uneventful here at the Sulac Hiking Fisherman Trail on the Pier Marquette River, where we've gone after all kinds of trout that we've seen and haven't been able to hook up on. Uh, but you know, that's not what we come out here for. So if we do manage to hook into a fish, you know, I'm sure we'll let you know. But right now we're just planning on fishing down the rest of the river, uh, you know, ditching some of the camera gear to lighten up and uh, just enjoying the rest of the day before we head home. You know, if you like this video where we fished the Pier Marquette River and caught no fish, you know, give it the thumbs up. Click subscribe down there somewhere. It's been MI Adventure Life. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys.